imagine this. This is what we used to have to go through. When you bought film, you actually have to look at the batch number. Yes. And then, it's a, it's a, yeah, right. It's like buying produce or something. Yeah. And then you would have to go test it, like shoot something yep. in a controlled and, environment. And rated it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you take it to your lab and you can't change labs because it's going to be different at the other lab. Run it, see what it looks like. Yep. And then you shoot and that only lasts until that batch runs out. And so if you got really familiar with a camera store, they may hold a batch of film for you. Okay. That's and cool. So, you know, you buy one roll and they'll say like, we'll save the brick for you, the rest of the brick. If cool. you like, you can come back. So there's that. So you have to develop a relation. You have to figure out a film you want. And that is a lot of testing. Um, getting a relationship where you can, get that batch over and over again. And, and you know, sometimes it would only be months that you can get this batch before you have to redo your test again. And then uh, you need to select a lab that you like because they need to maintain their chemistry. Um, I used Photomation a lot. Photomation yeah. is amazing at mm -hmm. their chemistry control. a and I is really good. I think yeah. right now Richards is really good. Richards in okay. LA. Okay. Um, and then once you get that, if you're going to be printing in the dark room, then you have to go through a series of testing for paper. Like, do you like Fuji Crystal Archive? Do you like, you know, Kodak's this or whatever? And so you'd have to test. And then luckily I had the school and I, since I worked there and Ron worked there, yeah. one of us always made sure that it was just fresh we were testing it like daily yeah. and sometimes hourly if there, there was a lot of people in there we would yeah. test like a couple of hours when you get these test strips and you yeah. would see, and then you would print but then if you're going to do it digitally then you have to consider learning how to use on top of an enlarger and on top of all that testing then you would have to pick your scanner Yes. And then you would have to pick your computer. Are you using a Mac? Are you using a PC? What software are you using? Are you using Photoshop? Learning Photoshop is a huge cur learning curve. Yep. And um, drivers. Yeah, drivers, oh, yeah. color management. Are you color calibrating management. your monitor? Are you using it like right now? Um, I have blackout curtains for these. And so when I am going to color correct in here, and the room really should be like a middle gray or something like that, but it's white. So I kind of turn the light off and I have like an, a, another light, but then a blackout curtain goes on in here and I color correct and my monitor is, is um, calibrated and you have to learn how to use Photoshop. You have to learn your operating system. You have to control your environment. You have to learn how to calibrate your monitor. And then on top of that, then you're going to have to figure out where you're outputting. So are you outputting to newspaper print? Because I used to work at the register and we had to color correct in a certain way to compensate for the paper base because it's a yellower paper base. Yep. Yep. Like uh, the LA Times uses a whiter color uh, paper than right. the register does. It's a better quality paper. Okay. And um, it's also, you have to see how much the ink will spread on the type of paper you're using. So you have to compensate for that and you have to learn how to do that. Uh, th th there's just so many elements. And so I think digital is just easier. <laughs>